Hey everybody! Welcome back to Northern Lion Plays The Binding of Isaac Afterbirth. It feels like every single run we've started on like a one win streak. Let's do this! D10, sack of pennies, at least we have good HP and seems like decent damage stats. Tier, not amazing. Speed, not amazing. Luck, not amazing, but whatever. 49KZ VYTA, I can't even come up with some clever wordplay to, to deal with that at all. But this, by and large, actually seems like a fairly reasonable start, and I feel like, mentally speaking, I'm in a place where I can handle a streak right now. I can handle a zany streak. We could be heroes. I don't know who I'm gonna, or what I'm gonna reroll here. I still, like, I don't understand this item. On the first floor, I don't see why you would ever want to reroll anything. On the last floor, if you're still using the D10, what the hell went wrong in your life to leave you in that position, you know? Why would I ever want to be dealing with, uh... Vaginal silkworms at this point in the game? It's hell! I guess we could have gotten, like, a lucky bomb... Uh, explosion that maybe went off and set off a tinted rock or something like that. But you can't rely on that. You can't live your life looking for stuff like that. I still, I also, I mean, the D10 is like a, it's a cool idea for an item, but I sort of don't understand how it could possibly be strategically good, unless you could reroll regular enemies into bosses and regular bosses into enemies, if that makes sense. So you could accidentally, like, reroll a room that has a couple of spiders on it and create two monstros, but you could also accidentally reroll, or purposefully reroll, you know, a monstro into a spider or something like that. It might make the game too easy when you get the D10. Who gives a shit, man? It would be hilarious. Hopefully it wouldn't make it so every game you just try to force the D10 into existence, but you know, you could. there's already... Oh my god, there's already instant win items in the game, man. Not instant win, but likely wins. Including other dice. Including almost all other dice. Anyway, I'm not gonna be picky about it. Let's just finish this off. I was really hoping we would just get a bomb or something here because... I really hate fighting Ragman with um, near default damage. He's also, he's just a son of a bitch, man. And I mean that in the way that like an 80 year old man would call someone a son of a bitch. Like he's, I have respect for him. But I hate him. It's like a begrudging amount of respect. Like he's a, he's a right son of a bitch. Please no. Okay, this is, this is where we get tested. Heavy is the head that wears the crown. Love to be the one to disappoint you when I don't fall down. You know what I'm Okay. HP, thank you. Very nearly died on the Ragman boss fight. That's not a great sign, but the fact that we didn't die is better than if we had died. I think I feel relatively non-controversial in saying that. Let's move along here. Okay, okay, okay. Just push these guys back into the wall here. They'll create bombs. Those bombs could blow up one another, or rather, maybe they could find the secret room for me here. Very lucky we started with 3 HP on this run. Maybe this is the guy we want to reroll. But I, I kind of want his bomb as well. How can you have such a huge hitbox and simultaneously be unhittable? Nice, we did find the secret room, two bombs, a lot of money. Well, a nickel is a decent amount of money at least. Now we're up to 14 cents, so we should be able to get something from our shop. Sometimes it just takes, you know, one... Seem like that. I know you don't like to hear me say seem anymore, but sometimes it just takes one seam like that to push you ahead. You know, give you some momentum. It's like when you're riding the bike, man. You you come up to the hill, you want to pedal real fast so that your momentum does some good stuff for you. You got a little brimstone there. A little brimstone, ain't nothing wrong with that. I will check out our last room here. Um, at least I thought it was going to be our last room. I'm not going to use the D10 to reroll flies because that seems silly. Don't get psyched. Yeah, I was gonna say there could be uh, could be some jerks in there, and if any champion shows up, he could actually kill you in one hit. So be careful about that. I thought we had a tinted rock in one of these rooms. I think we'll go for deep pockets. Not immediately useful, but I was, you know, hopeful that we would get a um, we get a spirit heart from that shop. But deep pockets actually gives us, you know, something for the future, which is nice. And then this could be our second secret room right here. I'd really love a black heart. Okay, disregard. What I meant to say is that I could not care less about getting a black heart. Doesn't matter to me. 
Notice I didn't say TV. TV is a nickname. Nicknames are for friends and television is uh, no friend of mine. But actually it is. Sometimes I watch Border Security. Even though it's highly exploitative. I, I can't deny that it's... There's some. There's a base level of human enjoyment on that show. For those of you not familiar, Border Security is a television program. Uh, one one version of it takes place in Australia. One version takes place in in Canada and the United States. Um, where basically you're a fly on a wall at the airport, and people are like, "Hey, dude, you you smuggling any heroin into our country?" And the dude's like, "No." And then they're like, "Well, what about this heroin we found in your bag?" And he's like, "Uh, yes." It's a total Butabi Brothers move, but uh, it's it's good. I would recommend it if you have Nat Geo TV, as we call it in Canada. We're not a hip. That's just what they chose to name it for whatever reason. National Geographic Television. There's something really satisfying and disturbing about watching this, and you're like, someone from another country comes into your country and accidentally brings like a banana peel, and they're like, well, it's going to be a $15 million fine. And you're like, yeah, you fuckers. Stop trying to ruin our ecosystem or whatever. This is Canada. You can't be bringing any of these Cambodian watermelons in here. We've got a fragile ecosystem. I can't even say it with a straight face. I mean, I, the work that is being done, you know, by the brave men and women of Border Patrol, of course, uh, is, is invaluable. But at the same time, when you're watching it, you're like, yeah, fuck these people who are accidentally brought in some beef jerky, but also maybe I would accidentally do that and I would feel real bad about being in this position. Anyway, we got mom's contact. We're actually totally good from an HP perspective here now, at least temporarily. Um, I would almost like a utility weapon, or a utility item here, not a utility weapon, playing a little bit too much Gungeon lately. I gotta, I think I've really gotta record like 12 Isaacs in one day, reset my Gungeon-ness, and then just be back in Isaac mode. And then I've got to record 12 Gungeons in one day. Oh, thank you for old bandage there. Which is going to be very difficult because each one of those runs is like 80 minutes long now. Okay, don't get hit so much. Really wish I could re-roll you into a deal with the devil that would give me precedent. But sure, you know what? Krampus's head, at least it's something that we can use. Take our half heart here. Uh, we probably are not going to go to our shop, but we might as well at least check. We have improved ourselves pretty considerably here. Um... Obviously, things like boss fights are not going to be a problem anymore. Just feel like maybe this is our secret room. I don't think the TNT would have gotten it, but I could be mistaken. Not quite enough money. Oh, a luck upgrade is good, but not quite enough money to get uh, anything from our shop. And no bombs. We could buy a bomb and then try to use that bomb to get enough money to buy something from our shop, but it's unlikely. I think I'd rather just save a key for maybe even like a golden chest on the next floor. But this is... Really, really good. There were some times early on here where... The, I mean, it's still early on. We're only like seven minutes into the run. But there were some times where it looked real shitty. And that we might die. As no, oh! We didn't have to do that. <laughs> That's no longer the situation. Honestly, that might seem like a minor mistake. And I'm definitely in the business of trying to play down uh, Isaac mistakes that I make. Make them seem not as serious as they, as they might be. But uh, things like that can add up, man. They can add up to making your run a lot more difficult than it needs to be. And, you know, if you're really on the razor's edge, one HP away from death, as we were on this run, that could be the difference between life and death, is, is not making um, mistakes like that that might seem a little small, but uh, in actuality can have disproportionately high impact. So, I think it's, it's in our best interest to uh, slow down a little bit, play better with respect to the fundamentals, and, and be good here. Sweet golden key. We'll try to check out everything. Be really nice if we could somehow get a guppy's tail. Also, very glad that I did not um, murder him. It's an iRobot quote. Um, very glad that we did not uh, use Krampus's head, so we were able to save it for an enemy as difficult, of course, as the husk is. But uh, we did get magic mush there, so we actually get a stat increase, which is very important. Little Brim was doing like 80% of the work here. I was just kind of a vessel for it to funnel through. You know, it's like a Milli Vanilli situation. I was Milli Vanilli, and then... I don't remember the... I mean, I was not really alive to the point of being cognizant uh, when this Milli Vanilli thing happened. The people still... Is Milli Vanilli still a cultural, cultural touchstone for people? Basically, they lip-synced. But, uh, you know, in at least in 
Western media. It might be true in the rest of the world. Lip syncing is really frowned upon, but this took lip syncing uh, one step further in the sense that even on their records, they weren't singing. It was like some. It was like two models that were actually doing the the uh, music videos and being the face of the band and stuff like that, and then a couple of dudes who I guess were not quite as presentable who were, you know, actually doing the work there. It's a weird story. Um, I guess we'll open both of these. I did say we wanted golden chests. Basically, it was, I'm trying to think of like, you know how Tony Stark is not, wait a minute, where am I going with this one? <laughs> I was gonna say, Millie Vanilli is like the Iron Man suit. And the people behind Millie Vanilli were like Tony Stark. I'm not trying to imply Tony Stark is not handsome. You know, he's a billionaire philanthropist playboy or whatever he describes himself as in Iron Man 1. Um, disregard. What I was saying is that I was like, I was the ugly dude writing these dope-ass pop jams like Blame It On The Rain. Blame it on the rain. Anyone but me. And then Lil Brimstone was the, was the handsome models here trying to make this... Uh, more profitable for us. So I used a bomb there, it didn't work out. We can hold another card, so we, I mean, might as well, I think, but it ended up being the Magician, which is not very good for us, but still, a good floor, and we might as well finish down here. We haven't seen our item room yet. It's always a good sign when you actually forget that you've not been to your item room, because that means that, in all likelihood, either you are suffering from, you know, an early onset mental degenerative disease, which would be terrible, or your run is good, which is good. And I don't believe that I'm suffering from, uh... Ooh... You know what? I think we don't want it. Our speed is already fairly low. I don't believe I'm suffering from any kind of degenerative condition. Um, most of the time I feel as, if not as smart as I've ever been, at least as wise as I've ever been. You kind of... I've, I've talked about this in earlier episodes, but I think, even though I'm still young, I'm starting to feel that you trade that as you grow older. Um, you, you trade your... Your intelligence in the moment for long-term, you know, wisdom. You become wiser most of the time, or you, you should. That's the ideal anyway. But if I'm being honest, probably I peaked in intelligence in my freshman year of university in the sense that, you know, if you asked me to find the integral of a, of a line or something like that, could not be done. Might be able to find the derivative if you made it easy enough for me. And I know many of you people out there, many of you people out there, ooh, tears down, are gonna be in, um, you know, maybe a, a later level of high school, <clears throat> or uh, or even college, and you're gonna be watching this like, wow, I can do integrals. Enjoy it while it lasts, motherfucker. Five battery charges? This is a little ridiculous. Once you get out of college, if you end up working in, uh, or out of high school for that matter, if you end up working in an environment where you're not doing integrals, you're gonna forget, man. Your brain gets rid of that information, and instead, it starts to fill it in with, like, the IMDB pages of actors you looked up once. So, I mean, you know, now, instead of being able to do integrals, I could tell you, like, five films that Mina Suvari starred in. American Beauty. Two of the three American Pie movies. Um... Loser, starring Jason Bateman, who was all, he was also in the American Pie movies. Not Jason Bateman, Jason Biggs. Scott, what are you stupid or something? And then um, I forget the one where they play robbers. They're they're like religious girls who also become bank robbers. It's not Spring Breakers, anyway. I probably didn't need to prove the point there necessarily, but you get the idea. Enjoy it while it lasts, man. I also have found that as I've as I've been out of school for a while, my spelling has gotten a lot worse. And I've always prided myself on being like, you know, I'm a good speller. Spelling's automatic. Do you still do spelling tests in school? Like if you're... Ah, oh, that was bad. If you're like 17 right now, did you do spelling tests when you were in like 7th and 8th grade or something like that? Or did, are they just like, ah, we'll let the spell checker sort it out now. The future is now. There's no end to the possibilities. Obviously, we're going to fight the stain here. Man, Mom's contact really hooked me up there. That's all right. I didn't need uh, a deal with the devil anyway. What would I want to deal with the devil for? Five runes. I like this. I really wish I went and picked up one of those five battery charges. God's Flesh, by the way, is one of the coolest tier effects that I think is actually pretty horrible. We don't really need bombs or key. Two Ansus is okay. We can use the AWAS right here. Uh, we can use the AWAS right here. Okay, Ansu Sierra is definitely better for us here. 
let's just move down to the next floor. Um, this is one of those things, like, uh, I, I asked about it maybe, like, last year. I said, like, do they still teach, uh, cursive writing? And there was, like, a 50-50 split. Some people were like, they still teach cursive writing. Some people, um, said they don't teach cursive writing. Cursive writing is just handwriting, um, that you do because your teacher tells you to. Is that what I, I'm trying to get at it from a fair point here, but people were like, when you get to college, you're gonna need cursive writing to write as fast as your professor talks. And I'm like, yeah, okay. All right, teacher, let me spend like 50% of my time in, in middle school or in elementary school learning how to do this. And then, you know, of course, we were the lucky ones. We had, you know, computers were invented, pop well, not invented, but popularized during, you know, my adolescence, I suppose. And as a result, it's like, man, I could write this by hand at like 20 words per minute, or I could type it at like 100. That's a, an easy decision to make, in my opinion. So they ended up being wrong about that, but people that they sometimes stretch that too far, in my opinion. They use it to get indignant, you know? They're like, yeah, why would I ever learn long division? Your teacher's always like, you're not gonna need a, you're not gonna have calculators everywhere in real life. We've all got calculators. Look, that's true, but I still feel like being able to mentally do arithmetic is an important skill. It gives you power in negotiations. If, you know, the car salesman says, eh, yeah, you know, it's a 1% APR on a $30,000 car. Uh, over the course of a 36 month loan. You, you do that mental arithmetic in your head, you don't pull out your calculator. But you know what? You should pull out your calculator. Because if your math is wrong, you're gonna feel like an idiot. But if you don't have to pull out your calculator, that means you've got bigger balls than the car salesman. And that means, regardless of what you pay for the car, you have won the negotiation. Please, give me a good deal with the devil. I beg you. Might as well pop our death card here. I don't even know if I'm going to get a deal with the devil. The gate is uh, one of the least reliable enemies to have to kill without taking damage. Oh my god. I tracked that shot the whole way. So we are not going to get a deal with the devil here. And all of a sudden, everything on this run is thrown into question. Can we still win? Yeah, absolutely. But I got to admit, it, it sucks the big one to basically be guaranteed not to get a deal with the devil here. But it's my own fault. I could have gone to the shop, perhaps, and used the shop to uh, give ourselves a spirit heart and insulate us here. We will take matchbook. Which sucks, because I'm going to go to the curse room anyway, but uh, this is fine. We, we can take some time to rebuild ourselves here. We have a shop coming up that, I mean, probably will contain greed, but I hope it doesn't. We have a um, an item room. Hopefully contains maybe Mom's Knife. Just Just throwing it out there as a potential. Okay, we'll, we'll definitely open this with eight keys. I should pick it up. I mean, it, it'll it work towards the Bob transformation, which I don't really care about because the odds of us getting it are quite low. But um, the big thing there is that at least it won't show up again in the future, unless it's from one of the bosses who can't help but drop it. I do also want... Oh, that was a very convenient I can see forever card. But I do also want to point out, I think we're kind of getting screwed a little bit here. Even though we do have Magic Mushroom and Little Brimstone, um... Nothing else has really been blowing the doors off of this run at all. And we even got a Tears Downgrade. So Magic Mush has been good, don't get me wrong. And it's way better than Tears Downgrade is bad, if that makes sense. However, could like the whole goal is not to just get better than worse. The whole goal here is to get better than, like considerably better than you were. Okay, BFFs is huge here. Joker card. We didn't get a deal with the devil, we should go in here. It's Breath of Life. You know the rules, though. Um, you at least do the angel fights. You don't have to fight Mega Satan, but the odds of you actually getting uh, an angel room are so low that every time it shows up, you take advantage of it. I blame this shit 100% on Krampus right here, by the way. But anyway. Um, I'd really prefer not to lose this Eternal Heart, because this is... Unfortunately, whew, shaping up to be, I can't believe we dodged that, shaping up to be one of those runs where maybe you actually just want to have as much fucking HP as possible and then, you know, roll that way. Um, do we know what this is? Luck down. Probably won't be taking that then. There's a, you know, if I, it's good that there's school boards because a lot of people would probably be unhappy with the way that I design the school curriculum. And I know this because I talk about it on, on Twitch now and then, and people are like, man, I would hate to go to your school. 
At my school, no more cursive writing. Starting from like sixth grade, you're learning like, uh, you're learning some form of computer science. You're learning at least computer literacy. Maybe in sixth grade, we just start out teaching you, you know, how to use a spreadsheet or something like that. And then seventh grade, we're like, hey, make a simple program in Scratch or something like that. I think that's going to be a valuable skill that people are going to be interested in as they get older in a more technical focused world. And people are going to be like, well, I don't want to be a computer programmer. Look, do you know how many courses you take in high school or in middle school right now that you definitely do not want to be? How many people in your geography classes ended up using the geography information on a regular basis? Nobody's arguing geography isn't important. Everybody's like, hell yeah, teach me about the tertiary industries of the country in which I live. But as soon as you try to move something new into the curriculum, they're like, I don't want my son touching computers. Anyway, I would make, um, I would make a much larger focus on physical education. Now, I'm not a quote-unquote jock. But I think that's almost as close as you can get to a universal life skill, is teaching people the importance of nutrition, physical activity, it, very important for leading a well-balanced adult lifestyle, especially in an age in which so many people work sitting down, myself included. Now, I don't always practice what I preach there, but I think, you know, ingraining those skills at a young age would be important. And I think it's, it's much more important than a lot of the classes I took in, in high school, and I took mostly academic stuff. You know, we... If, if you're a smart person out there, you might be like, why would I take gym? I could just do gym on my own time. I should, I'd be better off taking, like, chemistry or something like that. Well, you're not wrong because from a, you know, college admissions standpoint, that's valuable. Now you know the commentary is getting into the entertaining stuff once we start talking about college admissions. Ooh, bring the heat. Captain America Civil War ain't got nothing on this level of robust entertainment. But, uh, you know, for real, in this day and age, you can learn anything, almost anything, on your own. By the time you finish 12th grade chemistry, your teacher knows exactly the same amount about chemistry than you do. You should, you need, you want to supplement your knowledge, you can go on Khan Academy or something like that. But I think, you know, a school being like, hey, here's 45 minutes a day, go for a jog, do some stretches. You know, nothing too serious. And if you can't do it for whatever medical reason, that's of course fine as well. You just don't get to graduate high school. I'm joking, of course. Let's nip that one in the butt. Um, apart from that, I mean, ah! I, I think that, that by and large, the curriculum does an okay job. Why not, man? It, of course, it depends where you live in the world. You know, different places are going to learn different things. But those are, those are the big ones for me. Because when I was in uh, high school, it wasn't like computers were a brand new thing. They were like, they were around. Um, but my freshman year computer science class was literally how to use Microsoft Word and Google Image Search, which is a real fucking bummer. That didn't prepare me for... First off, everybody in the class already knew it. Secondly, because we spent all day on the computer regardless. Secondly, what what good is that going to do us in real life? You know, that no job is like, hey, do you know how to use Microsoft Word and Google Image Search? I'm not talking about, like, doing a mail merge in Microsoft Word. I'm talking about, like, making text centered. This run is not good enough for me to be in this total tangent mode, but I am. I'm interested, though, to, to see what other people would think. How would, you, how would you fix the curriculum? And you can't just be like, oh, I will get rid of math because I don't like it, you know? The re I think our problem with math as a society is that we build it up as if it's, it's this uh, second lockdown pill. Fantastic. We build it up as if it's like this impossible... Thing. You know, we teach kids that they should be afraid of math, when actually it's one of the very few uh, subsets in life where there's actually a genuine, objective, correct answer most of the time. You know, when you write an English essay, there's no correct answer. You know, it's all subjective and ethereal and mercurial. And, of course, it's important to be persuasive and stuff like that. You know, that'll only help you out in life as well. But, you know, math is a puzzle that you can solve. It's just a game. Now, sometimes, you know, learning the rules of the game might be a little annoying, I suppose, but... Anyway, also get rid of geography, or teach it properly, I guess. Like, geographic uh, information systems is really cool, but all we did in our geography class, it's gonna make, it's gonna reflect really poorly on my high school. All we did in my geography class was watch movies. We watched Dumb and Dumber. I don't know what we were doing with our lives then. It's not my fault. You know, the teacher was the one putting the movies on. I think the sun card will sort us out here. Okay, what are we gonna do? I honestly, I mean, the run is pretty bad so far, but an Incubus pickup is nice. 
tiny planet adds a little bit of a, an edge here that we can use, you know, just to kind of make things more interesting, which I, I genuinely appreciate. But I don't really want to go to these special rooms. I kind of want to, you know, bum rush, get to the chest as quickly as possible and be happy with that. Um, but we've got some big rooms to go through. This is not an XL floor. This is not a Nick Van XL floor. Oh, that's the other thing, of course. If I was the school board administrator, of course, every day there would be an hour where you go to IMDB and you just look up an actor. They'd be like, okay, today, um, we're going to look into the films of Susan Sarandon. And then you'd be like, I didn't know that was Susan Sarandon and Stepmom. And the teacher would be like, you idiot. She's featured very prominently in the marketing material alongside Julia Roberts and Ed Harris. Fresh off of his uh, Screen Actors Guild win as the uh, antagonist of the Truman Show. I guess he's not really the... Anyway. And of course in Canada we would go through the, the course of is this person Canadian or American? Um, and then, you know, we already do that, but we'd, we'd, we'd formalize it for extra credit. This is why you don't want me as your school board administrator. We also had like a six-week course in high school that was mandatory, that was like how to vote. People didn't take it seriously. We watched Aaron Brockovich. I don't know why we... <laughs> All we did in high school was watch movie, movies, apparently. Look, I sympathize with, with teachers in that one. You know, movie day is a great day when you're teaching ESL as well. You, you're filling, like, four and a half to six hours a day of lessons forever, you know? Like, a, a high school semester is, like, 99 weeks long. Obviously, that's a slight exaggeration, but you get the point. Occasionally, you're going to need to throw in some movies. I always liked in history class, at least we watched, like, you know, Troy. I'm not saying it's the most historically accurate film, but it was better than just, you know, watching Ace Ventura when nature calls in French, in French class. But anyway, maybe I shouldn't be complaining so hard because I'm out, man. I'm out, but I, I miss it sometimes. And you may too, or you may not. You know, that's your prerogative. Beautiful. Uh, I don't think we want Cursed Dice just because it could throw things into question here a little bit. And of course, I would formalize the Binding of Isaac as an actual rigorous academic discipline. So, you know when I'm talking about, oh, this is Isaac 101, this is Isaac 215. Nah, dog. I'm actually writing those down and um, creating a, a course calendar that I'm going to offer through my, uh, through my website, www.google.com. That was super weird. That transition was very strange. I wonder if it's, like, this hard drive that I have the game installed on, I really should move it, but it's, uh, it's starting to fail a little bit. And, it, you know, if a hard drive fails a little bit, if you're in for a penny, you're in for a fucking pound. Or it might just be Curse of the Maze? Curse of the, I don't know. I have no idea, honestly. Either way. Ooh, just keep it going. Keep it going. Good stuff. Let's start small. Two wins. Three wins. Four wins. You know, one, two, three into the four. Snoop Doggy Dog and Dr. Dre are at your door. Of course, we all know. These are the words of our lord, the god. The rap god. Oh, secret room contains super greed. He's super greedy. That's a blast from the past. Starring Brendan Fraser and Alicia, Alicia Silverstone. Whatever happened to both of those people? I thought there was, like, not controversy, I thought there was some kind of, like, empathy surrounding Brendan Fraser that I'm not aware of. But I, as with most things on the internet, I can't tell if it's sincere or a joke, or as is often the case, some strange combination of the two where it originally started as a joke and then became sincere, or vice versa. I really think, you know, this run is still on the razor's edge. If we can just, and I'm not talking about a mobile game platform, if we can just get to the point where we get down to the chest, have a decent amount of HP, and then are able to pick up four items. I like our odds, but they have to... I knew that was locked down as I picked it up, but... Um, then we, we could be okay. We have to do that. It's a little dangerous. Oh, man, I gotta admit, Satanic Bible's pretty tempting here, but it's, it's a real... Let me put it this way. It's a short-term cost for long-term gain, potentially. 
And society tells us that you should always sacrifice in the short term for the long term. But sometimes that's not true. Because our long term is not really that long in this situation. You know, the run is going to be over in 20, 25 rooms, uh, no matter what. I actually think that in this case, if we sacrifice in the short term, we're going to be in a bad place. So I, I think I'm just going to ride it out like the way we've already got it. I think we're gonna, just going to say, you know, if you want to go and take a ride with me, smoke a joint in the back of my limousine, oh what? I don't think that's how that song actually goes, but it must be the money! I saw the saddest sight. Uh, Kate and I were in, were in downtown Vancouver. Oh, we just seen the symphony, uh, a marvelous performance of the Vancouver Symphony Orchestra uh, playing Tchaikovsky's uh, Symphony No. 6, Pathétique. Anyway, we were walking down... See, I don't just walk the walk of being a snob. Sometimes I talk the talk as well. Wait, it's the, I don't talk the talk of being a snob. Sometimes I walk the walk as well. Um, but um, we were walking in downtown Vancouver, and there was a Saturday night, and a limo went by, and a behatted man stuck his head out of the window and went, Woo! Busy street, party district of Vancouver. Nobody replied with a woo. And it was like... You know, Enya should have been playing in that moment for how sad everybody became. Who can say where the wind blows? I hope we didn't ruin that guy's night. To be honest, he was polluted enough where I don't think it mattered, but... By the way, when I said four items, I should have said eight. Luckily, I didn't mess it up here. Could have easily done that. Common cold. Bursting sack. Common cold's okay. Milk, don't cry over it. Oh my god, this was... Pretty bad, all things considered. We will take Ouija board. Um, I think we will use Forget Me Now. We will lose Krampus's head as a result. This will allow us to take a space bar item should we get a space bar item out of one of these four chests. So, like, I'm okay with that. Um, and I guess Prayer Card actually does give us some HP, so we'll take it. Uh, we got Rotten Baby and other spider bombs out of this that I. Can never remember what they actually do. Rotten Baby, uh, I'm, I'm pleased to have, and if we can actually create spiders reliably, that's awesome. Oh, uh, B, 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 only friend. Blue Baby's only friend is actually a, uh, a solid choice for us here, I think. And I'm gonna use that, because Tiny Planet kind of hits without me paying attention to it in many ways. Um, I'm gonna try to use that... Oh, we got pins or something? Yeah. I'm gonna try to use that... Um, Instead of using our tears, but it's kind of tricky because I also need to aim little brimstone But I think that you know out of the 16 items or whatever we've gotten since we started the the, the first chest all those years ago um, We actually have improved ourselves enough that I feel more confident than I used to feel Beelzebub Ooh, Beelzebub now we can fly dude so many good fly well not good But you know in concert with one another so many good fly items we picked up on the chest here I think if we win this run, which is still up in the air like an Anna Kendrick film, I can be proud of it. And I mean that sincerely. This is a run that we never got super overpowered on. We got an early little brimstone and really had to rely on that early little brim to carry us like almost the whole way. It's an early little brim, early little brim, yeah, pop the top, lick it and shake it. What percentage of infectious diseases do you think are transmitted by baby bottle pops? Baby bottle pops and ring pops are just a one-way ticket to Sticky Handsville, man. And, I mean, I'm not saying it's like, you know, 10%. But surely, like, one one-thousandth of infectious diseases... Oh, a spoon better could be good here. One one one-thousandth of infectious diseases must be transmitted by candy that you wear, right? I'm talking, you know, candy necklaces, ring pops, etc., etc. Don't give me, like, please, Ring Pop, uh, TM. Oh, absolutely, use the Emperor here. Don't feel that I'm, uh, slandering you here. Your candy, I actually find, from a taste perspective, quite tasty. Your hands always get sticky. Always get sticky with a Ring Pop. You should sell a Ring Pop glove that is just made out of, like, pulled sugar. And then you put the glove on, then you put the Ring Pop on, and then when you're done, you eat the glove. Hashtag, you eat the glove. 
If the glove don't fit, you must eat it. We really added with the dated 90s references here today. But okay, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. That's a win. Feels good. Confidence back in me. If you enjoyed it, click the like button. It helps out a great deal. Of course, subscribe if you want to see more in the future. For now, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.